deer travel corridors are very easy to set up but they are very essential on your property if you want to guide and direct deer movement so that you can give yourself a high percentage sit when you're bow hunting. Let me show you how I set up some of our deer travel corridors on our property. We'll start out with an unintentional travel corridor. So here's a spot that I cut in to gain access to a stand. So we enter from over there. You can see we got some deer scat right there. And the trail cuts right here. So when I'm setting up a, a travel corridor, I am literally just clearing a path of least resistance. Well, this was a path of least resistance for us, but the deer also decided to start to use it. And as we get further out here, the deer sign exponentially increases. So you can see, like right here, it is absolutely pounded down. We actually have a fresh scrape right there. You can see the tree branch they were scraping on. There's deer scat all over right here. And they followed my access trail right out here. I mean, this is pounded down. So what I did is I came through here with my brush saw and I just cut it back. And then I came back a couple weeks later when it all sprouted back up and I sprayed it down because I wanted a nice quiet access. Well, that's exactly what I do for when I'm setting up a travel corridor. And the deer follow the script. Now it still makes a good access for us because I'm pretty sure this trail is mainly being used at night. I don't think there's daylight activity on this trail, so I'm still calling it a good access trail. But when I do this exact same thing in the timber, where I clear a path of least resistance, and I guide that movement right by a bow stand, it works like a charm. And this is absolutely pounded down and loaded with sign, and the deer are kicking out onto the bean plot right there. Well, here's a travel corridor that's cut right through the logging region. So you can see it's exceedingly thick. And right here, I got my travel corridor that's cut in. Very, very thick around. You can see we got deer scat again. The deer have been on it. And what does this travel corridor do? It just weaves right through the region. I don't like these to be too thick. Or, sorry, I don't like these to be too wide. I want two to three feet wide. I'm, I come through, I have my brush saw, cut it back, spray it, and then it's ready to go. The deer see it, they use it, and what I can do, I have a stand right up there, might be tough to see. And that movement guides is guided right by that stand. I had a buck two years ago take this exact travel corridor, sorry, it was three years ago. I don't think I've hunted that stand since then. But it took this exact travel corridor of bedding all the way up through there and you can see this logging regen is coming in really thick so it's all setting up as bedding. Northwest wind blows this way. This is the side the buck's going to want to be on because you can scent check all that bedding. And it was November 1st and he worked all the way along the bottom of this ridge. He came and he stopped at 30 yards and I let an arrow go. I missed it. I hit a tree. That was totally okay. But it sure was fun to watch him use this corridor that comes right through here. And all it was is giving him a path. Well, here's another travel corridor. Cutting the path of least resistance there. Ladder stand right there. 15 yard shot right there. Travel corridor goes right by it. Now I use that nice steel, it's like an FS-131 with a brush head on it, basically a weed whip with a brush head. Works awesome for this. But I started out doing this literally just with a pair of hand snips or light chainsaw. That's how I cut all these things in. And eventually I added that tool to the arsenal, which has been awesome. Look at all the tracks on this one. But that's all you have to do. There's no... Nothing fancy to setting up deer travel corridors. It's just you give them the space to walk and they'll use it. Now you can see occasionally I might hinge a tree off to the side. 
but if you keep in mind if you set up travel corridors in the timber and you're hinging trees you want to hinge perpendicular you don't want to make it parallel because if it gets too narrow and feels too boxed in I should say um, the deer aren't going to use it we do want narrower trails but um, if it feels boxed in, boxed in and they don't have escapes off to the side they're not going to use it so when I hinge a tree, I'll just hinge one here and there. But if I'm hinging in the timber, normally you're hinging in the shade. So just keep in mind that tree's probably going to die. But it still kind of guides and directs that movement. But you can see nice dirt trail right here. All kinds of tracks on it. Cutting right up through this thicket. This is a plum thicket. It is phenomenal for deer. This is why I love wild plum. Because they make these nice dense thickets like this. Oh, almost fell. And I cut in this corridor because I knew the deer would be in this bedding. So I decided to tell the deer, I want you to come this direction, out of the bedding, and go right by our deer stand. And it has worked very, very well. I hope that's a rock. I see something white up here. It is a rock. Good. I was worried it was a belly. But the deer have pretty much kept this one pounded down for me. I haven't had to do a whole lot of maintenance on this trail. But I still check them once every summer and make sure that, um, that the deer are able to navigate through the trails here. It gets a little bit thicker, a little bit more dense. But you can see the trail weaves right up through there. So, works very well. Look at how nice and thick these plums are. Actually, wow, a lot of them are snapping off getting a little old i definitely got to do some maintenance in here but you can see all these are look at that they're all snapping off they all hinge themselves weird and then <laughs> that's crazy right where they uh snapped off you got new growth i'm going to do some major pruning in here this summer i think because i want to breathe new life into this thicket i did some work in here a few years ago and uh haven't been back for maintenance since and clearly they're getting over mature and all the tops are breaking off so I'm gonna breathe some new life in here get these new young plums coming and get this area rocking and rolling again but still bedding some deer now that's why the travel corridors are in here there's one up over there too that connects with this one that's all you need to do this corridor right here actually runs the entire length of this stretch of woods which is probably I bet a quarter mile. I got this corridor going all the way through. It's the main travel hub. And we've had bucks that love to run this one during the rut. My, We've had one, I don't remember one that we missed a few years ago. I keep talking about all these bucks we miss. But well, somebody else in my family missed that one on the travel corridor. It's nice to have opportunities. Got to seal the deal though at the end of the day. There's a nice rub. But there was one that we missed on this corridor here a few years ago. But it's had nice movement pretty consistently every single fall. Here's that other corridor I have that drops down to it. So again, all you need to do, cut the trail, path of least resistance, and then come back, spray it down just so it stays killed back and the deer will respond. So if you got the time, this would be a great winter to get after a project like this. I think everybody's having a mild winter. I mean, this is insane in Minnesota right now. Normally we'd have at least two feet of snow and we'd definitely be below zero. And it is 30 some degrees today. No snow on the ground. I think we just had three to four inches of rain. And I was talking to one of the guys that I've done work for and he was literally out transplanting trees a couple days ago. I mean, this is just insane. It's almost January 1st. So, what a crazy winter, but we needed it. Super stressful winter last year. We lost a lot of deer. So we needed a mild winter desperately. So thank you, El Nino. All right, that's all I got for today. Y'all take care. God bless.